Hey everybody, it's Dana. Welcome back to day eight of the holiday card series. Let's go ahead and get card making. So today I'm using Distress Oxide Inks as my color palette. I have Shabby Shutters, Lucky Clover, and Chip Sapphire. And the products we're using are from Waffle Flower. I am using the Poinsettia Cover Dye. Absolutely love this dye. And we're going to be using the wonderful Christmas uh, sentiments. I think they work perfectly with this backdrop we're going to create. So today we're going to do some ink blending because I want to have a very striking background for my card. So I'm coming in. This is Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And I'm lining up that cover plate. And I want to draw a pencil line. And this is just going to help me gauge where I need to have my three colors. So I just put a pencil line there and I'm kind of like dividing the area which I'm going to have color into thirds. So this way I know I'm going to have a gradient all the way down and I'm not going to have too much of one color versus too much of the other color. So I'm going to start with the shabby uh, shutters. Now you guys have probably seen ink blending a million times so I did speed this up a little bit but I wanted to talk you through how I like to ink blend with the Distress Oxide inks. To me, the more ink you have, the better your blend is going to be. Don't be afraid to add a lot of ink here. I have had these um, cubes or these ink palettes for years and I have yet to have to refresh them with their um, refills. So this was like the first ones that came out. I got them when they first came out. And like I said, I have yet to have to re-ink these. So don't be afraid to use your um, your inks like this where you need to use a lot of it, especially for these distress inks. I have the regular line of distress inks and I think I've only had to re-ink one of them. So in order to achieve a good blend, you're going to have to use a good amount of ink. So I came in the center with that Lucky Clover and now I'm coming in with that Chip Sapphire. And I can kind of see those pencil lines still so I know where to gauge how much of what color I want in what area. Now you're looking at this now and you're like, Ugh, that doesn't look like a soft blend between the colors. And that's when I say you have to use a lot of ink. So I'm coming in with just one first layer of the Distress Oxide ink. That's all I'm doing. Coming in with one layer of this blending. Then I'm going to flip my card panel around and I'm going to do it a second time. And that's really going to build up that color for me and get me to have a better blend between the two colors. Now working with the oxide inks, they are a little bit forgiving when it comes to a blend compared to the regular Distress inks, but you still wanna make sure that you use a good portion of your ink to get a good blend. Because especially when you're working on white cardstock, you're going to see that white toothiness behind the colors. So if you don't really saturate your paper with the ink, you're always going to see like those speckly spots in the background. So I go back and forth between all of my colors, making sure I kind of get that good blend going. Now it doesn't have to be precise. Let's say that. It does not have to be precise, but you want to have as much color down as you can just so you get a good blend. Now, especially on this because I'm using a cover plate, I really didn't have to have like a perfect background, but it's something that I kind of have gotten in the habit of doing is just to make sure I have a very saturated background. Once I blend those colors together, you're gonna to see most of it is covered. I have a little bit of peek through on that blue, so I am gonna add a little bit more ink to that and really rub that into the paper. But between the colors, I have a nice gradient now, and that's because I made sure to use enough ink for this. Now, I do wanna heat set this back because it, there's a lot of ink on this. But before I do that, I wanna spritz this with some water because you know, distress inks, especially these oxide inks, really um, take water and like you're able to remove it and see the oxidation, especially in these. And look how gorgeous that is. I have all the lines of distress oxide inks and I don't know why I don't use them more often because they actually are some beautiful inks. 
So as I heat set that back, you're going to really start seeing those little dots that really, you know, lend us to know that this is a distressed ink. Once I have that dried, I'm going to set back in my card panel or my cover plate rather, and I'm lining it up where I know I can get all of the gradient between there. So that was the perfect reason why I to drew why I drew those pencil lines is to make sure I can get each one of these color blends into the dye area. So I would tape this down with some purple tape and then I'm just going to run this through my die cutting machine. Now you can do this with all the colors of the stress oxide inks, but you know, if you have a great cover plate like this from Waffle Flower, it is really going to step up your game. Now I did bring that over and most of the pieces kind of stayed in place. And I wanted them to stay in place because I need to poke them out because I'm going to kind of mix up my colors. So I would just pop each one of the flowers out and each one of the dots out. So I just have a clean background, a background that does not have any areas that are filled. So this did not take me long to do. I just very carefully knocked out each one of the flowers. And now I'm going to bring it back in and look how gorgeous this is. This would be beautiful just like this on paper, but I want to fill in those areas. And I'm going to do the reverse of the gradient on the card. Before I start working on that, I do want to put this down onto a white card base. I was thinking about maybe cutting this out a couple more times and kind of giving it some lift, but I kind of decided against that. So I have another piece of Nina Soda White 110 pound cardstock, and I'm scoring that to be an A2 card. And an A2 card is the standard four and a quarter by five and a half. So I can go ahead and fold that over. And I always try to make sure I get a good crease on my cards. This way when I send them in the mail and the recipient has them, I want them to stand nicely. And if you don't have a really crisp line, sometimes they have a tendency to like wobble or fall over. So just make sure when you're doing this, use a heavyweight card base and make sure you have a good crease. Now you can see I can pop this right on here and it looks gorgeous. Even if I did not fill anything back in, it would still be a gorgeous layout. Waffle Flower has a few of these kind of style cover plates and I really, really love them because they're easy to use. And for the color palettes that we've been using during the holiday card series, all of those color palettes will look stunning with this um, background. I chose today to use more of a non-traditional color palette and that's what I love about Christina and I doing this together is that we have some very traditional color palettes for Christmas cards and then we have some that are not so traditional and I love that. Sometimes I just don't want the typical green and red. Now remember you can pick up that in combos guide over on my blog. I'll have a link below. Um, it has been a great resource for everybody this year. Now, once I have that cover plate down, I am going to just pick out some of the areas that might have been a little bit uh, double cut. So I'm just using my little pokey tool. I don't know what this tool is called. I just call it my pokey tool. <laughs> and then I will bring back in just the flower portions. And I'm going to switch it up. So I'm going to put the navy ones at the top. And I'm going to put the lime green in the middle and the uh, darker green at the bottom. So I'm using every single one of the, pa the flowers, but I'm just switching the order on which they lay down. So I'll just go through all of the flowers and I'm going to place them in the reverse order. So as you can see, I just switched over the order, but look how pretty that card looks. It looks totally different now. It really has a little bit more character to it instead of just having the colors uh, be exactly where they were when I cut them out. All I have to do at this point is just add a little bit of glue and I'm just adding glue to the center of these, not to the entire petal, just the center because I wanna make sure that I can have that um, have a little bit of definition. So once I press it down in the center, I kind of use my nail to lift up the, um, the petals so they're not flat. And that's going to give my card a little bit of definition or dimension without really having to add anything else to it. 
It kind of looks like at the end, like the poinsettias are coming up off the paper. So I will do this for every single one of the rows, but I'm going to share with you, I don't fill in every row. I do one row, skip a row, so that color is white. Another row with poinsettias, the next one is white. That's just going to allow me to have some of that white poking through to really bring in this color palette. Once I have them all set into place, I mean, look how gorgeous this is. Oh, I can just see this in all of the combo um, in colors. But you can see the petals are kind of like lifted off of the paper. So when I do send this, I am going to put this into like a box. Next, I'm coming in with a wonderful Christmas sentiment. And I think I'm going to use the Happy Holidays. I think that one works a little bit better. And I don't want to cover up a lot of my panel. So I'll use a more streamed line sentiment for this. I'll bring up my Mini Misty and I'm going to stamp this in the same inks we use. Now, I know a lot of people think you cannot stamp with Distress inks or Distress Oxide inks. Yes, you can. I'm going to show you a way that you can do it and then not worry about your ink uh, moving or blending after it is stamped. So once I put this in my Mini Misty, I'm using Nina Solarite 80 pound cardstock. I'll lay that down and then I'm going to bring in those same colors. I'm going to keep this color combo going. So the first color I'm going to grab is going to be that um, shabby shutters. I'm only going to use two colors because this is a smaller sentiment. So I'm going to use the shabby shutters and the chipped sapphire. And I'm gonna get a really pretty blend on this. First, all I wanna do is tap the top part. Tap on where it says happy. I'm not gonna to be too concerned at this point if I get a good impression. So once I have the ink on there, I can go ahead and close down my misty lid, and then I'm gonna stamp the first top part of that greeting. I'll go ahead and rub that lightly, and then when I pull that back, I'm going to have happy. Now it's not crystal clean, and that's okay. That's why I'm using my misty for this. I'm gonna tap a little bit more of that color on there, close down my lid again, and press down. Now you might have to do this two or three times to get that really great impression, but that's okay. If you're using a Misty, you're gonna be fine. Next, I'm going to come in with the chipped sapphire, and I'm going to tap that on the bottom portion of the um, sentiment, so the holiday portion. I am doing a little bit of overlapping, so I come in to that shabby shutter. Once I have it on there, I can go ahead and close out my lid and then press down. Now I did take my finger and kind of blend the um, ink before I stamped it down so I won't have like a harsh line. Once again, I'm tapping on that blue, getting it nice and saturated with that color. Again, if you have to stamp two or three times, that's okay. I can go ahead and press that down. And when I lift that up, I have this gorgeous two-tone greeting. I love how this looks. Once this is complete, I did feel like, uh, I want a tad bit more green. So I did go back in there with that shabby shutters again, press down, and now it has the coverage that I want. And look how pretty that is. Now, in order for this to kind of like stay and not like move, I have a little trick when it comes to just doing it with the sentiments. So I will wipe off my sentiment, clean it off really, really well, and then I'm going to emboss this with clear embossing powder. This is going to help that sentiment kind of lock in with the color. Because you know, sometimes if water hits distressed inks, it will reactivate them, and I don't want anything to reactivate my sentiment. So I use a little bit of Versamark, and I'm making sure that everything is lined up, and I'll go ahead and press down. Now, I'm rubbing pretty hard right now, just to make sure I get good contact with that paper. I'll do this one more time, just for good measures. 
I could, could have probably got away with just doing it the first time, but I decided, you know what, let's just be safe and we can go ahead and stamp that out again. Now, once I have this stamped out, this is going to be protected now. So all I have to do at this point is add my clear embossing powder. And remember, have fun with your inks. Have fun with the products that you have in your room. I tested this out and I was like, oh, okay, this kind of works. And I wouldn't have never known to do this method if I had not taken the opportunity just to sit around and play with some of my products. Any extra of that clear embossing, I'm just wiping away with a clean brush. Just making sure I get it away from the sentiment. I can go ahead and move that out of the way and then we can go ahead and heat set this. Again, I make sure that my heat tool is really hot before I bring it to my paper and that's going to prevent some of the warping that you'll get. So once this is heat set, I can go ahead and grab the coordinating die and line this up. And this is going to be such a gorgeous sentiment on my card. It's not going to take up a lot of room, so it's not going to really interfere too much with the poinsettia background we have, but it's going to be a sweet little touch to my card. Now, if I wanted to, I guess I could have stamped a sentiment in one of the areas before I um, ran the plate through, but I don't think I would have had much success with that. I did die cut two additional layers so I can stack this up one on top of each other to give my card some dimension. Now, of course, instead of using the glue, you could totally use foam tape, but since I was already die cutting, I already had my machine on my desk. I was just like, go ahead and use the coordinating die. Now, this is what's so great about having a coordinating die with your sentiments or your images because it gives you the opportunity to die cut out like backer pieces to give your sentiments or your image some weight and some definition. So I'll go ahead and line all of those up. And this is only three inches or three dies thick. And that's going to be perfect for my card. I'll bring in that panel and look how gorgeous. And look by using those same colors, using the same colors that we use. This is really such a beautiful card. It really just came together. I'll add a little bit more glue because I think I missed a couple spots between my layers. And I'm using Barely Art glue for this because I love the little thin nozzle. Then I can go ahead and flip this around and place this down on my card. Now, like I said, this is not really taking up much room. I can still have my flower petals kind of lifted because the sentiment kind of sits right between the two panels. So now I can go ahead and press that down. And I'm not gonna add anything else to this card. I'm not adding any gems, nothing. I love the way this card turned out. Now remember, I like to show you inspiration on the same color palette. So again, this is the first card we used. And that was the color palette. And then the second one, I used the snowflake background from Waffle Flower and the same sentiment pack. And look how stunning that is. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up day eight. I will be back here on Wednesday for day nine. And don't forget about the giveaway. Check out video day six for all the information. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.